So what is going to bring the redemption is the merit of the minority that will gain and merit to have real emunah. And what is real emunah? That Hashem is hiding in the darkness, in the evil, and sowing the redemption, weaving, use whatever poetic word you want to use. Now again, we can understand clearly why Mashiach, King David, came out of darkness, out of a very dark place. And you know what? When you're going throughout our history, all of our great leaders came out from darkness. You know, there's one individual that is called, has a title, Hatzadik. Because all of our sages and leaders have a title, right? Moshe, Rabbeinu. Avram, Avinu. Aaron, Akoin. Shmuel, Hanavi. Right? Everybody gets titles. There's only one who got the title, Hatzadik. Yosef, Hatzadik. Why? Rabbi Akiva was not Hatzadik. Why Yitzchak HaTzadik or Yaakov HaTzadik? Why Yosef HaTzadik? You know why? So let me tell you a little story. I'm sure you know that. Yosef was a young individual, 17, 18. He was uh, uh, kidnapped and sold by his brothers to a, a convoy of Egyptians or, or Arabs, whatever, sold him to Potiphar. He was the servant in the house of Potiphar. Uh, uh, then they called him Potiphar, really, his name was not Potiphar, his name was Epstein, eh, eh, Potiphar. <laughs> he had a little mansion in the eastern part of... Potiphar was a... Uh, uh, uh. Is there a nice word of saying it? He was a pervert, basically. He bought Yosef to be his toy. I'm not saying that, Rashi says that. Yosef was a handsome teenager, and Potiphar bought him to play around with him. Nothing happened, Baruch Hashem. But his wife, she had his, her eye on Yosef. Ooh, every day, different set of clothes. Givenchy. One day, Chanel, high heels, tight clothes, nails done every day. Seducing him, wherever he goes, she's... Hi. Now what are you expecting from a teenager, 17 year old, 18 year old? In his prime, this gorgeous woman is seducing him. There was an internet then, so he gets it live. One time, there was some holiday, they all left. She decided to stay home. She says she doesn't feel good. And she says, today I'm going to get him. And you know what? You don't know the whole story, but Yosef got undressed already. He was going along. And after he got undressed, and excuse my language, he was already prepared, or as a, he was erect, erected, whatever it's called, a vision came in front of him of the portraits of his father. And he caught himself and ran out. But a sin still happened. Sperm came out of him. Still sin. He didn't sin with her, but sperm came out. Specifically, ten drops came out of him. That ten drops that came out of him later had to come ten martyrs to die to rectify the fact that ten drops came out of him. But he still did a sin. Now, how do you call him Yosef Atzadik? You know why? Because he did shuva. First of all, he stopped himself from sinning with her. The fact that some sperm came out of him, that's a whole different thing, but he didn't sin with her. Can you imagine you're already undressed? And then you're saying, sorry, I gotta leave? He did shuva, so he's called a tzaddik. Our sages say, in a place that a great Sadiq stands, sorry, the other around, in a place where a Baal Tshuva stands, a great Sadiq cannot stand. Because the Sadiq, either he doesn't have a Yetzirara, or either he's, you know, in the level that is one of his challenges. A Baal Tshuva, he fights. He, she, same thing. 
I told you that story a hundred times, I'll tell it again. That you understand what's about Tshuva. So I'll tell you the short version of the story. There was once a king, he wanted a successor, the next to be the king. He told all his advisors, go and find me the best man in the kingdom to become the next heir to, to, to take the kingship. So they go and they run ads everywhere. 10,000 people came for the monitoring, for the examinations. From 10,000, they brought it down to 1,000, from 1,000 to 100, running them all sorts of tests and whatever. And after a few months of a lot of checking, they narrowed it down to three people. They come to the king and they say, Master, we have narrowed down the options to three men. What should be the last challenge to determine who's gonna be the next king? The king says, we're gonna lock them all in a room for 24 hours and each and every one of them is gonna get a bottle of my wine, the greatest of all wines, and the one who's not gonna drink from the wine will be able to hold himself, that will be the one who becomes the next king. Now for us to understand the temptation of the wine, it's like putting a pile of heroin in front of a heroin addict, okay? Okay, they lock them all up in the rooms and the countdown starts. And then when the 24 hours is over, all the cameras are there, CBS, Fox, you name it, they're all there. Live broadcast in Facebook, everybody's waiting to see. So they're coming and unlocking the first room, everybody's biting their nails. The drum roll in the background, they open the door. See the guy sitting like this. The bottle is sealed. He didn't touch the bottle. Wow. Everybody's starting to whisper. Maybe that's the key. Everybody's like putting their beds. They're opening the next room. Everybody's biting their teeth, their nails, drum roll in the background. They're opening the door. They look on the floor. The guy's a lash is on the floor. The ball is completely empty. Okay, that's not going to be the next one. Now let's see what's going to be in the third door. What's going to happen? All oh, the tension is killing everybody. They're unlocking the door. They're opening the door. They see the guy sitting on the bed upset, angry. The bottle is open and this much is drank from the bottle. Everybody's like, okay, number one is going to be the king. The king says, no, he's going to be the one. Yeah, but you said that whoever drinks from the wine is going to fail the test. He says, you're right. The first one didn't drink from the wine. Okay, we'll give him some honor. We'll know what uh, patience, what power to overcome the, the temptation. But the third guy drank a sip and for 24 hours, he was looking at the bottle, knowing how it tastes, and he still didn't touch it. That's the man that's gonna be the next leader. And that's the analogy between a tzaddik and a Baal the tzaddik doesn't know the taste of the sin. The Baal Shuva knows how it tastes. You know what, what powers you need to hold yourself, not to go back, knowing how it tastes. That's a Baal Shuva. So Yosef was a Baal Shuva, so he got the name of tzaddik.